Welcome to this series on the study of St. John, a play by George Bernard Shaw. In this segment, let's consider three areas, the Hundred Years' War, Charles VII of France and John of Arc. To supplement the points mentioned here, you are encouraged to do a bit of reading. The materials will be available through the blog post of the Department of English, CMS College Scotland. Ten sixty six is a date familiar to us, the Norman conquest of England. The Norman rulers who came to be known as the Plantagenets are nobles from France who had territories under their control in France. The Hundred Years' War can be seen as a series of conflicts based from 1337 to 1453 between the House of Plantagenets, who were rulers of England, and the House of the Valois, the rulers of France. The purpose was to control the Kingdom of France. Why should the English rulers claim the throne of France? The Norman rulers of England, with their possessions in France, were vassals or subordinates in power to the French monarchs. In 1328, Charles IV of France dies without a male successor, without sons or brothers. At this time, there was a new principle in France which disallowed female succession. Charles had a sister named Isabella. She was married to the royal family of England. And now she is the mother of Edward III, King of England. Isabella claimed the throne of France for her son. But the French nobility rejected this, maintaining that Isabella cannot transmit a right she did not possess. Thus the throne of France passed to Charles's patrilineal cousin, Philip, Count of Valois. In 1337, the only English possession in France, Gascony, was taken back by the French king. This starts the Hundred Years' War, which went on in three phases. Have a look at the three phases of the Hundred Years' War. For our study, let us focus on the third phase, which is known as the Lancastrian War, which was from 1415 to 1453. It was started by King Henry V of England. It is the time of Charles VII of France. Remember, he is not yet the king. He belongs to the House of Volvo. Before his assuming the throne, he was called the Dauphin. This term goes back to 1349 when Philip VI bought a non-royal territory named Dauphin. The terms of sale included a clause that the heir apparent of France should be called a Dauphin. Such terms have parallels in history. As we know, the heir apparent of England is called the Prince or Princess of Wales. In the midst of the Hundred Years' War, Charles VII inherited the throne of France under desperate circumstances. Forces of the Kingdom of England and the Duchy of Burgundy, that is a French duchy, occupied areas of France, including Paris, the most populous city, and Reims, the city in which the French kings were traditionally crowned. In addition, 
Charles the sixth, he is known as Charles the Mad, the father of Charles the seventh. He had inherited his son, disinherited his son in 1420, and recognized Henry V of England and his heirs as the legitimate successors of the French crown instead. Adding to the problems, at the same time, a civil war raged in France between the supporters of uh, the House of Valois and the Burgundian party, the supporters of the House of the Valois Burgundy allied to the English. So Charles VII was in a desperate position. He moved his court, his uh, royal sitting to Burgos, south of the Loire River. However, his political and military position improved with the emergence of John of Arc. And John of Arc and other charismatic figures led French troops to lift the siege of Orleans as well as other strategic cities and to crush the English at the Battle of Patay. With the loyal English troops dispersed, the people of Reims switched allegiance and opened their gates which enabled the coronation of Charles VII in 1429 at Reims Cathedral. This long-awaited event boosted French morale as hostilities with England resumed. Following a battle, the Battle of uh, Castilian in 1453, the French had expelled the English from all their continental possessions except for the Pale of Calais. Now let's get introduced to John of Arc, nicknamed the Maid of Orleans. She is considered a heroine of uh, France for her role during the Lancastrian phase of the Hundred Years' War. John said she received visions of the Archangel Michael, St. Margaret and St. Catherine of Alexandria, instructing her to support Charles VII and recover France from English dominion late in the Hundred Years' War. The uncrowned King Charles VII sent John to the Siege of Orleans. She gained prominence after the siege was lifted only nine days later. Several additional swift victories led to Charles VII's coronation at Reims Cathedral. This long-awaited event boosted French morale, as was mentioned earlier, and we have the victory of France. On 23rd May 1413, John of Arc was captured by the Burgundian faction. You will remember they were allies of the England. She was later handed over to the English and put on trial by the pro-English bishop of Bouvet, Piri Caution, on a variety of charges. After Caution declared her guilty, she was burned at stake on 30 May 1431, dying at about 19 years of age. In 1456, an Inquisitorial court authorized by Pope Calixtus III examined the trial, debunked the charges against her, pronounced John innocent and declared her a martyr. In the 16th century, she became a symbol of, a symbol of the Catholic League and in 1803, she was declared a national symbol of France by the decision of Napoleon Bonaparte. She was beatified in 1909 and canonized in 1920.